three years ago. I was living with my then boyfriend in a one bedroom apartment in a little mountain town. It was a half basement unit so the bottom of all of our windows were level with the ground outside. It was also an older apartment and not all the windows could fully lock. One day, my boyfriend comes home from work while I'm laying on the sofa and immediately runs up to the window near me and looks out of it frantically. He then goes to look out every other window in the house then walks around the outside looking in the windows. When he comes back from his confusing exploit, I ask him what the fuck is going on and why he's being a spaz. I think I just walked up on a dude looking in the window at you. He took off as I walked up, he tells me. This was naturally very upsetting. But after discussing it and considering the time of day, it was about 2 p.m., and the number of people out and about around the complex at that time. We came to the conclusion that it was just a curious neighbor or someone passing by happening to glance in. With that, we forgot about it. If only that was the end. For the next couple of months, odd stuff happened here and there. Someone would knock on the door occasionally, then when I went to answer, no one was there. I'd find things in my apartment that I wasn't familiar with, or things like clothing items would vanish. I didn't really think twice about any of it until one night. My boyfriend and I were arguing, around 1 or 2 in the morning, and we were being a little loud. We were standing in the kitchen face to face. His back was to an open window with the blinds up, halfway, and I was facing it. Amidst our arguing, I glanced behind him at the window, thinking I saw the reflection of my face in it. The window was open, and it wasn't my face. There was a man with his face pressed almost against the window screen watching us. Given the fact that we were arguing and it was late, I thought for a moment it might have been a concerned neighbor walking up to the window to speak to us. A main walkway for the complex was right on the other side of the window. So I spoke to him. Hello, can I help you? I asked a little aggressively, thinking our neighbor was intruding on our privacy. He responded to this by staring, unwavering and cold, right at me. His face did not change expression. He did not blink or move. Just looked right at me in a way I have never been looked at before or since. In this instant, I also realized that because of the window being level with the ground, the only way this man's face could be where it was, was if he was laying on the ground outside of the apartment, or crouched and contorted to look into the window. My heart sank. I buried my face in my boyfriend's chest and closed my eyes in fear. My boyfriend up to this point thought I was messing with him. When I buried my face into his chest, only then did he say, is there really someone at the window? I whispered yes to him. He felt my fear and took a moment before he turned around. By the time he did, the man was gone. It was at this point I started to think about all the little odd occurrences that I've been experiencing. I assumed the worst. I filed the police report with his description, and my brother loaded my apartment up with weapons to protect me or at least inform this peeping Tom that I was armed. After that night, myself, my boyfriend, and my brother were on high alert. There were a couple times when my brother came over that he saw a sketchy dude hanging around, and even one time he saw him at my window. He tried to follow him discreetly, but the guy took off running as soon as my brother stepped in his direction. The last night I had an experience with this man. I was sitting home alone on my sofa. My boyfriend was at work at a restaurant about two blocks away. He had picked me up from work about an hour earlier. We had sat on the sofa together a little while when we got home. Then he kissed me and left for work, locking the door behind him. After he left, I continued to sit on the couch on Reddit for a while in silence. After about an hour of me sitting there in silence, I hear a door creak open. It's a small apartment, so to see the bedroom and bathroom doors from the couch, all I had to do was lean a little to the left. 
I assumed it was one of my cats coming out of my bedroom. So you can imagine my shock when I lean over and see the door that's opening is the door to the water heater closet slash small storage space. I look to my right and see both my cats sleeping soundly at the other end of the couch. I look back to the door and it's still creaking open very slowly. It opens enough for me to see it. A set of fingers wrapped around the door, easing the door ever so gently to open it as quietly as possible. That was going to be a no from me, dog. I ran my ass barefooted out the door, into the snow and down the street to my boyfriend's work. I called the cops. When everyone was back to check out the apartment, he was, of course, gone. After that, my boyfriend and I packed our shit, went to stay with my parents, and six months later, moved 1,000 miles away from that town. That was the end of it. I initially found the sub around that time, as I was trying to find other stories similar to mine, or people to talk to who had experienced something like I did. I had intended to write my story here eventually, and I figured after this week's events, I had to. I live a thousand miles away from all of this happened, so a part of me thinks there's no way this person could have found me. But last week, I heard a knock on the front door of my apartment. I was expecting a package, so I figured it was a delivery driver and didn't answer. I'd go get the package later. Then they knocked again, and again. The third one made me feel uneasy, so I waited a good 20 minutes to check the door. When I did, there was no package, no note, no nothing. Someone was just knocking. Although it made me uneasy, I didn't initially think back to my stressful experience in my last town. Then two days ago, I went out to get groceries. I have a little patio and I go out there in the mornings to just chill or check on plants a lot, and I've been known to leave it unlocked in the day on accident. Never thought of it as a big deal. Until I came home from the store two days ago, and the deadbolt to my apartment was locked. The deadbolt that can only be locked from inside the apartment. Period. I assumed someone robbed me because I dumbly left my patio unlocked. I called my sister. I called my current, new boyfriend. I waited for people to be with me and I went into my apartment through the sliding glass patio door. Nothing was out of place, nothing of value was taken. At this point, my heart sank. Nothing was touched, nothing stolen. Someone was inside my apartment just because they wanted to be inside of my apartment. I told my boyfriend about my stalker, and he is not taking this shit lightly like my past boyfriend. I filed another police report. We checked for recording devices and cameras. He put Nest cameras up all over the place, and we're on high alert. I really truly hope this is a coincidence, but if this man really followed me across multiple state lines, there's no one on this earth I'm less interested in meeting. Over spring break when I was 16, my mom and I decided to fly down to see my brother at his college in a lively southern city. My family and I had spent our summers in the city for the entirety of my life, and we were used to drunks and odd people. Safe to say, this was a town that I knew like the back of my hand. Anyway, we decided to rent a room in an Airbnb that used to be an old southern style home. The doors had been replaced with one that were metal and required an access code, so we felt safe. It was our second night there, and we decided to go to bed around 10 p.m. We heard the usual whoops and cries of drunks from the streets, and occasionally patrons entering the main door which our room sat immediately to the left of. My mom had fallen asleep, when all of a sudden someone starts banging on the door like a maniac. I was anxious, but decided that it was nothing. Someone who just got locked out by their friends as there was a wedding party in the room above us. This continued for 20 minutes, then ceased. 
I fell asleep, then at 12 a.m. the banging resumed. Because of the house's age, you could hear the banging throughout the house. So a woman came down and said, This isn't your apartment, and if you don't have a code, you can't get in. Instead, the person became even more enraged and started slamming against the door. This was a sound I could never forget. The woman threatened to call the police if they didn't leave, so they did. It was nearing 1.30 a.m. and the crowds outside had died down. I closed my eyes when the banging started again, paired with someone slamming against the door. My mom told me to call the police as we sat shaking in bed. The operator informed me that several other patrons had called in requesting police and said they were in the area. I ended the call. In a few moments, we heard the breaking of glass and someone screaming. I quickly called 911 again, stating how the situation had gotten worse. I was in tears, trembling and thinking this person was inside the house, about to do something terrible. We heard yelling of, get out, from the room that sat across from us. The police arrived and my mom stepped out of the room. When she came back, she told me an older man was heavily intoxicated with no idea where he was. He had punched the window from the room across from us, the window which was right next to one of the patrons' heads. The police arrested him on charges of disorderly conduct and damages of property. The next morning my mom told me not to tell my dad, as he would have freaked out. I agreed. It had been one of the scariest moments in that city for me. I've always been borderline obsessive about locking my doors. I did it as a kid and as a teenager, I learned, through experience, that a locked door is at least a deterrent and can give someone warning that a person wants to illegally enter their space. It's something I'm known for. Even at social gatherings, I'll lock doors behind me when I come in, without even thinking about it. I've heard the line, well, who the hell locked it, followed by that flush of embarrassment because, of course, it was me, and now I have to say it. For over a decade, I've done nightly checks, because I can't sleep without doing so. Knowing this is a preface to my story and highlights how strange this situation is. I've just only moved here recently, about five months ago, from a way more heavily populated place in my state. The house where we reside is set far back from any pavement road, separated by two dirt roads and two private driveways. My rental is on another person's property, so you go down their private drive and off to the side, is my own private drive. And I've never even seen a pedestrian back here. Nice and very private. No one can even come here without explicit instructions and often I still have to meet them down the road as GPS places my house a few fields to the south of where it really is. It's a paradise for people like me who value their privacy and don't like having visitors without prior notice. The house is semi-surrounded by trees and brush, with a field on the other two sides. It took a bit to get used to the rurality of it, hearing coyotes often, sometimes cows screaming in the night, and the darkness of having no nearby sources of light pollution. Nearest town is over 20 miles away. But get used to it we did. Another relevant tidbit. I don't sleep in a completely dark house. I always leave lights on in a common area. Usually only one, but a light nevertheless. The back door leads off into the trees, but it didn't feel so creepy, as a few yards in there is a six foot tall wire fence, laden with vines and offering a further modicum of privacy. No one uses the back door. There's really no reason to. A month in and I found myself locked out. Unfortunately, I often lock the door handle on my way out, out of reflex really, as my conscious mind is the part where I know if I have my keys or not, but my subconscious takes over when I'm distracted. 
I knew I had only locked the handle on the back door and figured I could just pop it to get myself in. I checked the door out and it was pristine. None of those minute scratches that are present when you take a flat metal object and pop the lock on a cheap door. I didn't want to damage it, so I swallowed my embarrassment and called the landlord, admitting that I had locked myself out and needed back in. He came and let me in and I worked on being more mindful. A little more than a week later, I wake up thirsty. I walk groggily to the kitchen and as soon as I open my bedroom door, I realize it's way darker than it should be. My ever-burning light is out. I wonder briefly if there's a power outage, but I can hear my fan behind me in the room I just vacated, so that can't be it. I take another step and the hair stands up on the back of my neck. That feeling that someone's watching. Another step and it's beyond feeling. It's a conviction. I turn my head to the left, where instinct says the person is standing and for a split second I'm relieved. No one's there. In the next instant though, that relief abandons me as I notice. I can see stars where only darkness should be. My back door is wide open. I take two very fast steps backwards, out of the view of anything that could be in my backyard. Knowing I'm responsible for more people's safety than just my own, I don't retreat for long, almost immediately stepping back forward and further. I have to shut the door, of course. The entire path there, I just know someone's out there in the darkness waiting until I'm close enough to snatch. I reach out into the pitch darkness for the knob, expecting to feel a hand close over mine any second. After moments of panic, driven fumbling, my hand makes contact with the knob and I pull it shut with a slam. I go to turn the lock and find it still engaged. Maybe, just maybe, this once, the door wasn't completely shut like maybe the latch hadn't fully engaged. The turned off light remained a mystery. Both of my boys said it wasn't them, and that's very believable because they've never done it before. Both of them having a light to find the bathroom and such. So I just write it off as strange, but nothing else was amiss. So it was just one of those things that I'll never have a full explanation. From that point forward, I put my weight into the door anytime I check or lock it from my rare but occasional trips to the backyard. Life goes on, and I almost put it in the back of my mind, until almost three weeks later. I awoke from a nightmare. For the last ten years I haven't had a dream I can remember, but I do occasionally have nightmare clusters. Mouth dry, bladder throbbing. It was one of those bad ones where you wake up making inarticulate sounds. Trying to scream from a sleep paralyzed mouth. Deja vu. After my bathroom trip, I emerge into a dark kitchen. Two steps in. Someone's watching. Door is wide open. A panicked quick retreat followed by a fear-fueled moment of bravery. Where I rush forward and close the door. Sure at every moment that I'm about to be torn out into the night and slaughtered. Strange. I know for sure the door didn't pop on its own this time. What the fuck is going on? My adrenaline rush finally crashes as I lay in bed after, trying to figure this out. I've left my bedroom door open this time, so I can hear any goings-ons in the house. And I finally fall back asleep with two hours to spare before I have to get up. When I get back up to wake my boys, I'm halfway to the coffee maker before I see it. The facing door is open again. This time, no real feeling of being observed. Light's still on in the kitchen. I do what I already should have and check the door and jam for evidence of tampering. There's new scratches and bend marks where the aluminum gave when being pried. At least this means it's not a ghost. 
I don't really know what to do. Life goes on. Two weeks after that, the chickens pen 30 feet or so from my bedroom window crow long into the night. Even the hens are part of the show this time. With the hens making eerie little screams. It makes my sleep fitful, not very restful. And I wake up at 2am when my fan goes out. Power's out. Damn. I get up to utilize the latrine and to light a couple kitchen candles to save anyone needing to get up in the night from traversing the house in the darkness. Two steps in. Cue the hair in the back of my neck. And this time, I can hear the crickets before I even turn my head. The door is, of course, open. After I survive another door shutting, I spend a lot of the day thinking about this. There was more damage, scratches and gouges in the jam this morning. I try to rationalize how this can possibly be happening and can't think of anything that makes sense. Any innocent reasons I can attribute to it go out the window when I remember this has never happened even once in the daytime. I think maybe I missed the scratches, that they were already there and my paranoid brain told me they were worse, which could be feasible. All except for the day I got locked out and I remember. It was in such good condition that I didn't even have the heart to pop the door myself. I decide to change the deadbolts around and the front door has a square, lead cord lock. The back has a sloping one that I'm honestly sure is actually backwards in the door. Work picks up. Life moves on. That night I'm exhausted. Can't find my Phillips head. So in place of changing the locks... I put an errant Christmas decoration adorned with bells to place on the door handle and go to sleep. It's never happened two nights in a row anyway. I even considered setting up a camera, but thought of that little fact in my musings. Plus, I'm honestly scared to see what it would catch. For once I'm in bed early and I fall off as soon as my head hits the pillow. Cue the nightmares. This night I wake the first time at midnight on the dot. Dark kitchen, back door open, scary as heck. Fall back asleep. Wake up at 1.30, door open. Motherfucker. Wake up at 3. And to my enormous relief, the door is closed. Fall back asleep right into a nightmare. In this nightmare I can hear Christmas bells. I come upon a little girl with her back turned to me. And in that weird nightmare logic, I'm at first not that afraid of her. I ask her what her name is and she responds with, Someone's coming. Someone's coming. Chanting it over and over. She starts to get louder and after a few crescendoing repetitions, all the while Christmas bells as a background, she turns to me jaw on her chest, mouth unnaturally wide and screams, Someone's here. I pop awake. It's five and a false dawn shines faintly through my window. I immediately get up to check the door. Of course, the kitchen is dark. The door is open, but surprisingly no feeling of being watched. It feels like the danger has passed. Like gun smoke in the air after the main event has passed. I close the door and to my absolute horror, I turn to find the Christmas bells laid neatly on my dryer no longer attached to the door. I talked to my boys that morning, asked them about what they heard or if they heard anything the night before. My 13-year-old says nothing, nothing at all. Except no, wait. I got up at 2.30 to pee and the back door was open. I shut it. I asked him about the bells. He's pretty sure they were there on the handle. So I switched the locks. A few days ago, there was more damage to the door, but so far the lock is holding. About two weeks after my last post, there was one strange occurrence. I had left my bag in my car, with my allergy meds and nasal spray inside. I woke up in the night and couldn't breathe through my nose because I was getting a cold. I went outside through my front door and walked through the side around the house to the carport. I have one light out front, 
but it's just a standard porch light so it doesn't reach that far. The edge of a pretty dense group of trees is about 30 feet from my front door. It only stretches about 20 feet across, as there is a driveway on one side and a cleared field on the other. As I was walking out, I heard some movement in them. At first, I wasn't very concerned, as I live out in the country and it's not uncommon to hear animal life out here. Most of them won't approach people, but I did note it and looked in that direction. The combination of low light and the density on the trees and brush made trying to see what made the noise pretty futile, but I didn't see anything. I reached into my car and grabbed my bag and walked towards my house. The noise repeated, but sounded an awful lot like a heavy bipedal animal. I stopped near my stairs and turned to try and see. But as soon as I looked, the noises stopped. I could have been wrong, but it was strange that looking halted the noises, like whatever was out there watching and seeing me look. I said, Hello? Is anyone out there? Nothing. Just silence. I stood there looking for a minute, goosebumps all over. I yelled again. Nothing. What made it worse was there was no insect sounds either, which I'm sure was not part of it, but creepy nonetheless. For a solid minute, I just looked, trying to will my eyes to see whatever the cause was of the noises. I turned to walk up my stairs and whatever or whoever it was took off in the opposite direction. I'm quite positive it was a person. It went through the brush away from me at first, but within a few steps it had broken to the left for the darkened driveway on that side. It was definitely someone on two feet, and heavy. The sound of those running footsteps will stay with me for a long time. I'm so glad they were going in the other direction. The next day I went and checked my dirt driveway. There were footprints but there were others among them from this new crew work that had happened the day before. In my neighborhood, there is a group of people who live there that grades the roads and does light tree work. It's needed and appreciated, because even a slight storm can knock down road-blocking branches. I go out and help sometimes, it's quite nice. There were a few sets, and one set in particular that had a wide stride, with divots from pushing off its speed. Once I got to where the driveway met the dirt road, there was no way to trace where they had gone. Of course, by then, the prints had already been obliterated by the tire tracks of early risers. As far as evidence goes, it wasn't much. I mean, they could have been made the day before. After that, nothing. All was quiet. No more strange sounds in the night. No more waking up to an open door. Strangely enough, I've learned to trust my instincts through this, because I never again walked into my house and felt watched or not alone. All of this only makes sense in context, so let me tell you later of what I learned. After a month or so of this piece, I was feeling pretty good. I didn't know why it had all of a sudden stopped, even if whoever it was in the trees that night was the perpetrator. I doubt I had scared them off even that night let alone completely. I tried not to question good fortune, but I was curious as to what the heck had happened. Why had any of this happened at all? What was the goal? Why did it all of a sudden feel as if whatever cloud I'd been living under was lifted? I truly believe every single time I felt watched during that time was legit now. It wasn't just me, because I felt it when it was gone. It's too much to be coincidental with the timing. Here's the reason I think this and my theory. I was talking with my landlord one afternoon. He lives close by and when I see him out, I often walk over. He also comes over occasionally when he sees me. He had been pretty busy lately, not only with all of the social groups and such he's in, but he had also been doing a lot of traveling. So for a month or so, I hadn't really talked to him. Our conversations meandered the topic of the neighbor to my left side. He was a strange one, 
but up until this point it seemed quite harmless. He spent most of his time in his house. I thought it was because of maybe a slight agoraphobia, as he rarely went anywhere and seemed to have most things delivered. I know, I know, writing this now, there's already lots of foreshadowing that I should have seen. But people rarely see things like this when they are actively in the situation. I didn't know the guy well, but he wasn't super friendly. The mornings I would see him out in his rope and boxers, on his porch or in his yard, I would wave and he never waved back with the exception of once. I think that once was an accident, like he half waved and seemed to realize who I was and dropped his hand. My landlord told me in his conversation that he was quite sure this guy had a very outdated opinion on women. I had mentioned he never waved, and that's what he responded with, the reason he guessed he didn't. Here's the interesting point though. He said something to the effect of, I don't think you'll have to worry about that anymore. As in his antisocial attitude. So I of course asked him why. He was of the opinion that his house was about to be foreclosed on, and that he had made a run for it early. Basically that he went to live with family or hooked a rental before the police showed up to formally evict. He wasn't sure though. It was just a hypothesis. I thought maybe he was on disability or something prior to this, as he never seemed to go to work, but he clearly had some way to pay his bills. Or so I thought. I started to pay more attention, and I think my landlord is correct. The sheriff's office showed up with papers one day, but as far as I've seen, no one came to the door. So today I'm going to go up there. I'm going to knock. I hope he's not laying dead in there. But I would really think I would have smelled him by now if so, even with the cooler weather. Not to be morbid or anything, I just have to consider it as a possibility. I haven't seen him since a day or so before the tree footsteps, which is strange. But I really just don't know at this point. Anyways, the leading hypothesis in my mind is that it was him. I can't speak for motive though. Maybe he was working himself up to do something worse. Maybe he was just trying to scare me off. Or maybe he had some type of mental issue and the whole thing was part of some plan. I'll never understand.